Welcome back to the lecture Digital Euro of Commercial Banks. In this chapter, we're talking about the legal perspective of a digital euro. And while this is a big topic on its own, I am not a lawyer, I'm not a legal person, so I'm just covering a few aspects that are important. But in, in general, what I like to start with is a bit of a disclaimer. Um, everybody needs to make their own legal evaluation. So this is not legal advice. These are just some um, quick learnings that I would like to share. But uh, I kindly ask everybody to make their own legal evaluation when it comes to issuing a digital euro. What we can share so far is that from those use cases that I have seen personally um, in the European context, it is relatively safe to assume that a digital euro or a stablecoin um, can be structured as e-money. The good thing is that there is comprehensive e-money regulation. So e-money is, is not a new concept. It's something that banks and uh, e-money institutions and payment service providers are familiar with from a legal perspective and where there is a lot of institutions that already have the necessary license. So if the issuing of a digital euro from the perspective of a commercial bank can be done as e-money, then the good thing is that the licensing, licensing requirements are already met. And we do have a concrete use case that I'm going to talk about later where a bank has actually confirmed that for them, um, the, the way, the particular way they issue a digital euro, it does fall under the e-money regulation. But again, strong disclaimer, this is something that every bank and every institution that wants to issue a digital euro needs to check for themselves. Um, when you decide to issue a digital euro, one big decision that you need to make is the backing of the token. Um, typically, when someone um, issues a digital euro, they will have a, a real euro representing that digital token. And now the question is, in theory, you could treat it as a deposit or you could treat it as uh, a way where you issue the euro, but you don't have a, um, a, a segregated account where you would store the exact equivalent amount of euros. Now, this introduces some counterparty risk to those people who hold these digital euros. Because obviously, when you hold a digital euro, it, it comes really with the promise that you can take that euro, go to the issuer, and at any time request to convert that digital euro into an actual fiat euro or even into physical cash. Now, if this digital euro is not 100% backed by a euro balance, then if the institution that issued this digital euro is currently under a liquidity shortage, for example, the moment the owner of that digital euro would like to have it redeemed, they, they may not be able to pay him back in that very moment. So this introduces a certain problem. And therefore, my recommendation is to set up the issuance of a digital euro or of a stablecoin in a way that it's always 100% backed by an actual fiat balance and that this money is stored in a segregated account that is not part of an insolvency mass. I think this is an important aspect in order to create trust in the digital euro that you issue so that a lot of institutions and a lot of um, users will actually be using this as a payment method. So these are some of the aspects that are very important from a legal perspective. And I recommend everybody to continue reading on these topics and um, getting advice from legal ex experts on the topic of issuing digital euros. Thanks again for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the next chapter.